All right, it's in Florida. When I take the cloud-free skies when I can get them, which is early in the morning. So I took the sea star and the dwarf outside to do some lunar imaging in the daytime. So this is a daytime view of the moon. Um, you might notice I've already added a sighting tube to my sea star. I had a horrible time getting this guy to find the moon. Um, I tried the lunar mode where it's supposed to automatically find it and that failed and I suspect that's because I'm doing it in the daytime and the moon is not as bright in the daytime as you would expect so they probably have this tune to find it at night. Um, but I had to manually find the moon and it literally took me 25 minutes down on my knees going and getting a tube, taping it to the thing, aiming at some trees, aligning the tube with the trees, going back to the moon before I actually could see the moon in the view on my cell phone. Ha ha! I finally found it. That only took me 20 minutes. All right, we have a picture of the moon, finally. Um, so I have, for the dwarf, this alignment scope 3D printed. I use this to Pomer align the dwarf to Polaris. I don't use it to find things because the dwarf has two cameras. It has a wide angle and a telephoto camera. And with the wide angle camera, you see a large amount of the sky. You can say, oh, there's the moon. You just move it so the moon's in the aiming box and boom, it's suddenly centered in your telephoto camera, assuming you've calibrated it correctly. Um, this guy does not have that, and I was really missing it. Um, I am going to have to 3D print something that snaps on, like this sighting scope, but just as a finder guide scope for this guy. Um, you know, because if the auto find fails, um, you really have to aim it manually. Now, at night, it you know will do plate solving and probably will figure itself out. Everything will work just fine at night. But during the daytime, if you want to aim at something. Having a finder scope is necessary. I also, I'm not 100% certain if the optical path is directly parallel with the top of the case. It looked like the moon had to be a little bit higher up in the straw here. Um, so it's possible that the optical path is not going straight in from the lens, but bending to hit the mirrors and prisms and so forth inside. So I'm going to play with that and figure it out. Eventually I'll make some type of a finder scope that just snaps on the top for aiming during the daytime. Um, now, I'll put the images up side by side. The Dwarf has an advantage here. Its sensor does 4K images. Um, currently in astro mode, it's limited to binning 2x2, two two, so it's an HD image, just like this guy. But this guy's sensor is only HD, um, so you get, you know, 19 by 20 by 1080 vertically, and that's all you get. Um, this guy, um, in terrestrial viewing mode, in landscape mode, and photo, you know, video mode, you can get the 4K video. Um, and that's important because this guy has a wider field of view. It's about a three degree field of view, and this guy has about a one degree field of view. So the moon just barely fits in the field of view of the sea star. It fits, but it, it's tight. This guy here, you have a lot of wasted pixels on either side of the moon. Um, that's great for shooting the Andromeda Galaxy if you need to get the whole thing in, but when you're shooting smaller targets, I have found that I've been cropping this image down a lot, um, and so I'm looking forward to the narrower field of view with this guy, but it makes it a lot harder to aim at things manually. So, um, image quality-wise, I think that the Sea Star has an advantage. You'd expect it to because it has, you know, a two-inch aperture instead of a one-inch aperture, so it has a lot more light gathering capabilities. It's a triplet lens. I don't know what the optical characteristics of this guy are, um, you know, but if I take the moon and I crop the dwarf's image so that it's HD, it looks about the same as the Sea Star's size-wise. So we're cropping out a lot of the field of view, but we're only using the center of the lens there, whereas the Sea Star is using a lot more of their lens to collect this off the light. Um, and so you can see side by side, there's some videos and some um, still images that I'll put up on the screen.
Um, and in my opinion, the Sea Stars image looks a little better. Um, now, some of this is just color correction and things like that, but um, you know, the, the craters look like you have a little more detail on them, even though it's HD instead of 4K on the image sensor because of that you know, field of view advantage, the aperture size advantage. Um, so it looks like you know, the extra 25 minutes I spent aiming the Sea Star gets me a better image. Um, and you know, with astronomy, kind of the image quality is king, but man, those user interface um, elements for ease of use, the dwarf, I just aimed it at the moon, found it was taking pictures in like two or three minutes. Um, the sea star really, <laughs> you know, I, I was annoyed at how much aiming I had to do to get that, that image. Now at nighttime, when it auto finds and auto locates the moon and everything works, great. But keep in mind during the daytime, if you're doing scenery mode or you're trying to take pictures of the moon during the daytime or something, um, you know, this guy, can pose some difficulties with aiming. Um, there was absolutely no way I could have aimed it without the straw, and even the straw was not as tight as it really needed to be. Um, so I feel that for daytime aiming, you really are going to need some type of 3D printed accessory for a finder scope on this guy. Also, the speed movement on the Sea Star is really touchy. Um, using the Dwarf, I was always annoyed that the speed control was separate from the joystick. Um, but now I'm starting to appreciate that because there were several times when I was trying to go slow and it suddenly went fast and um, I think if they made the user interface circle a lot larger so you had more gradations of slow to fast it might be better. Um, but for now I prefer the user interface on the dwarf where the speed control is separate from the joystick control.